Hello everyone, now we will discuss on the topic advanced secondary processes part 3 and in this class we will discuss on bioelectrochemical system or microbial electrochemical cells and basically we will be focusing on microbial fuel cells and microbial electrolysis cells. So, these bioelectrochemical systems or microbial electrochemical cells are basically a new concept or new development in the secondary treatment processes. In this case, waste water is treated and the same time some energy like electricity or hydrogen or any other valuable chemicals can also be produced. And the term you see that bioelectrochemical systems we have already studied electrochemical systems and we know that in a electrochemical systems either the chemical energy of the system of the solution is converted to electrical energy or the vice versa. But the bio word is added means here the reactions will be taking place with the help of microorganisms and microorganisms will catalyze the reactions basically for the energy component production and the degradation of the organic compound. So, bioelectrochemical system converts biodegradable organic matter to electrical energy or hydrogen using a biofilm on the electrode as the biocatalyst. So, this is our bioelectrochemical systems, and we can summarize this whole concept like that is we are having waste water, energy rich waste water, or any organic compounds in water solution. So, then it is going to the MXs and ultimately will be getting electricity, hydrogen, value added products, methane, alcohols and our main target is here the treated water. And we can use here different type of living species like say microbes, bacteria, plant etcetera and microbial metabolism, ex vivo protein complexes, anode composition, electron carriers and fuel cell constructions will be influencing the performance of the process. As I mentioned that we will be focusing on basically two MEC and MFC. So, we see here there are many other options of the bioelectrochemical systems like say plant microbial fuel cells, microbial fuel cells, bioelectrochemical treatment cells and floating microbial fuel cells, microbial electrolysis cells, microbial desalination cells and ecological engineering systems. So, different systems have been developed and investigated by different researchers and we will be focusing on the MFC and MEC. So, first we will discuss on microbial fuel cells. So, this is the diagram which shows the working of the microbial fuel cell. So, here the organic containing waste water is entering into the cell containing two electrodes anode and cathode and these two chambers are, are connected with this membrane. So, this membrane allows hydrogen plus ion to transfer selectively and here we are having some organic compound and some waste water organic containing waste water and microbes are also present in it. So, microbes will be working on the organic compound for example, say CH 2 O whole 2 plus 2 H 2 O that will give us 2 CO 2 plus 4 H plus plus 8 H plus plus 8 electron minus plus heat. And this H plus which is generated that will be transferred here and after certain residence time treated water will be going out from the anodic chamber. And electron which are generated here this electron in the bulk of the solution that will be transmitted to the surface of the anode and it will flow through an external circuit and it will be coming to the cathodic chamber. 
So, electron will move from the external circuit and come to the cathodic chamber, hydrogen plus ion will move from anodic chamber to cathodic chamber through this membrane and when it is coming here at the cathode. So, then H plus plus electron plus oxygen has to be provided here. So, this 0 0.5 mole oxygen with 2, 2 H plus and 2 electron that will give us H 2 O plus it. So, so, we need to provide some electrolytes that is catholytes, we need to provide some catholytes which will be having some oxygen and that oxygen will be consumed for the production of this H 2 O and heat and this catholyte after certain retention period it will be going out. So, during the process we are seeing that electricity is passing through an external circuit that means, we are able to get some electricity. Electron is passing through the external circuit. So, if there is a load we are able to get some voltage and the flow of electron that is the current is available in our circuit. So, that can be used for any application. Now, the anodic reactions for generalized organic compound say C x H y O z plus H 2 O that can give us C O 2 plus C e minus plus H plus and cathodic reactions O 2 plus 4 H plus plus 4 E minus that is 2 H 2 O. So, this is a reactions which take place in the anodic and cathodic chamber of the MFC and in both the cases the reactions in anodic chamber reactions must be catalyzed by the microorganisms. Microorganisms must be available here in the second case that is in cathodic chamber microbes may be available or may not be available. Okay. So, this is the overall working of the MFC. Now, we will see how the performance can be improved and to understand that we have to get more insight on the mechanism of the electron transfer inside it and the mechanism of hydrogen transfer through the membrane. So, that part we will be discussing now. So, there are basically two types of electron transfer mechanism in the anodic chamber. One is your indirect transfer, where electron which is generated by the cell, microbial cell, which are working on the organic substance and creating electron and that electron is carried from the bulk of the solution to the surface of the electrode that is anode by some mediator. So, this mediator here this mediator this is the mediator on some organic compound and some compound those are used and that is taking electron from the cell due to the degradation of the organic compound and then electron carrying mediator is reaching here and releasing the electron and then it is again being free from the electron and again it will coming here and taking the electron and like this. So, this way the some material which we are adding externally. So, to increase the electron transfer that is one mediator external mediator that is indirect transfer through externally added mediator and through self excreted endogenous mediator is also there here like this if we see the mediator is generated by the cells and that is carrying the electron releasing the electron here again it is coming back and taking the electron and going out and that way it is transferring the electron. So, that is also indirectly electron is transferred to this from bulk of the solution to the anode surface microbes are not directly transferring the electron. But there are some other method where we will see that directly the cell is also transferring carrying the electron from the bulk of the solution to the anode surface and leaving the electron there. Okay. Now, here we see different types of mediators which can be used externally that is thionine, methyl biologen and methyl blue, humic acid, neutral rate etcetera. So, people have use this as an external mediator and this is the 
the schematic diagram to represent the direct transfer. So, the electron is generated here, the movement of the whole cell it is coming here and releasing the electron to this and then electron is being transferred. So, the electrochemically active redox proteins such as cytochrome, cytochromes are present on their outer membrane that can transfer electrons directly to the anode. So, this is the mechanism through which the electron is directly transferred from bulk of the solution to the anode surface by the cell itself. Now, we will see how the hydrogen is transferred. So, we have one membrane through which the hydrogen is transferred. So, mostly used membrane is nephion. So, this is the structure of the nephion. So, from this structure which we see this, this group is common that is R S O O O H group that is the sulfonic acid group is very very uh, important and is the major part for the transfer of H plus ion. So, how it is say from the anodic chamber hydrogen is generated that is coming to the su surface of this membrane and membrane hydrolyzed ionic site it is having. So, that is taking H plus. So, R S O O O H. So, it is giving us a H plus plus this R minus R O R S O O O minus. So, that minus site is taking this H plus again the, this type of conversion will be there. So, again hydrogen will be moving from anodic to cathodic sites and then ultimately it will reach to the cathodic chamber. So, this is one way of transfer of hydrogen plus ion that is called proton hopping mechanism. There are some there are some other mechanism also that is vehicular mechanism. So, we have the membrane where the porosity is there, the gap is there and through which H plus will be passing through. So, the major function of the formation of the vehicular mechanism is the existence of the free volumes within polymeric chains in proton exchange membrane which allow the transferring of the hydrated protons through the membrane. Water also has two suggested transport mechanisms electrosmotic drag and concentration gradient driven diffusion. Okay. The hydrophobic nature of the Teflon backbone facilitates the water transfer through the membrane because the nephew is hydrophobic. So, water will not be attached with it. So, water with this H plus that will be transferred from anode to cathode that is the vehicular mechanism. So, we are seeing here that different types of mechanisms which are responsible for the transfer of electron as well as H plus ion from anodic to cathodic chamber. And more the transfer of electron and H plus ion more will be the electricity generated in the circuit okay, and which is desirable. So, on the basis of this information we can manipulate and we can optimize the performance of MEC. Now, we will see some items which are essential for the design of or for the construction of microbial fuel cell like say anode, cathode, proton exchange system and electrode catalysts. So, different types of material have been used as anode and cathode like say graphite, graphite felt, carbon paper, carbon cloth, platinum, platinum black, reticulated vitreous carbon. Similarly, for cathode also graphite, graphite felt, carbon paper, carbon cloth, platinum, platinum black, RVC and proton exchange system type like very simple salt bridge and then porcelain septum or solely electrolyte or proton exchange membrane like nephion, ultrix, polyethylene, polystyrene, co divinyl benzene and sulfonated polystyrene different types of materials have been investigated. And electrode catalyst like polyaniline, electron mediator immobilized on anode, platinum, platinum black, MnO2, Ap3 plus etcetera have been used as the electrode catalyst and different types of microorganisms have been investigated and microorganisms basically follow two mechanistic path one is oxidative mechanism 
another is your fermentative metabolism. And in case of oxidative in presence of oxygen, so the microbes can directly transfer the electron from bulk of the anode to anodic chamber to anode surface. These are some example of this direct transfer and some indirect transfer can also be possible. There are many microorganisms which cannot directly transfer. So, indirect transfer is possible different microorganisms, microorganisms are mentioned here. Again for fermentative metabolism also in case of anaerobic condition, so microbes can be used and direct mechanism or indirect mechanism of electron transfer can be possible. So, these are the different types of microorganisms and different paths which are followed for the generation of electron as well as the transfer. Now, we will see the comparison of performance of MFC in pure and mixed culture, because you know just now we have discussed that different types of microorganisms have different capacity to work under different environment and they have different mechanism of transfer of electron. So, if we use a pure culture, so one type of mechanism will be followed, but if we use a mixed culture, so we will be having number of different microorganisms, those will be able to work under different environment and their electron mechanism is also different. So, in case of mixed culture certainly we will be able the system will be able to accommodate different types of shocks that means, the it can be more robust than the case when only pure culture is used, but pure culture will also have some advantage its performance if, if parameters are properly maintained may be better. So, we will see here pure bacterial culture if you use although these bacteria generally show high electron transfer efficiency, they have a slow growth rate, a high substrate specificity mostly acetate or lactate and relatively low energy transfer efficiency compared to mixed cultures. Furthermore, the use of pure culture implies a continuous risk of contamination of the MFCs with undesired bacteria and mixed bacterial cultures give higher resistance against process disturbances, higher substrate consumption rates, smaller substrate specificity and higher power output. So, these are the advantage and disadvantage of these two types of microorganisms if we use. Now, we will see the parameters which affect the MFC operation. So, performance of the MFC can be influenced by different parameters as it is a microbial system certainly your pH buffer and electrolyte will play a role, temperature will play a role okay. and then electrode material will play a role because electron transfer is necessary. So, conductivity of the metal if it is more then it will be having more electron transfer capacity and operating condition in the anodic chamber that is what is the pH, what is the temperature etcetera and what is the oxygen is available or not. So, operating condition in the cathodic chamber as I have mentioned that we have to the system has to provide oxygen. So, that H plus can combine with the electron and the oxygen to convert it into H 2 O. So, that if we can use some catholyte having more oxygen availability the performance will be more and then type and composition of the substrate again that part is coming whether it is biodegradable or not. If it is biodegradable then what is the biodegradable ratio all those things will be dependent type and composition of substrate and type and oxidant used in cathodic chamber again the same case what type of oxidants we are using. There are different types of cathodes like say air cathodes somewhere some oxygen is sent somewhere some chemicals where we can get more oxygen those are also sent. So, different types of catholytes are present. So, those influences the performance of the MFC and presence and absence of catalyst. If catalyst is present in case of cathode, so then the electron transfer makes easier and 
the performance also gets improved. So, these are the different parameters which affect the MFC operation. Now, as we mentioned along with the wastewater treatment the one another major objective of this process is to get electricity. So, how the voltage and current can be calculated that is discussed here. So, the current and charge in this case you know we have some electrodes that is anode. So, organic compound is degraded in the anodic chamber and electrode is transferred from bulk of the solution to the anode surface. So, there will be some local current. So, if we sum it up then we will be get the total current. So, the current I collected at an electrode is obtained by integrating all of the possible local current densities I j over the electrode surface. So, integration I j d a and total electrode surface area if we get the integration then we will be get the total current and the charge that is certainly the current that is will be current into time. So, I into d t so that will be the total charge within 0 to t time we can get. So, we can calculate the current and charge by that way. Then voltage and over potential how we can calculate. So, Ohm's law tells that V cell is equal to I into R cell that is volt equal to V equal to I R and the cell power V equal to V into I that we know it very well and we know that there are open circuit and closed circuit voltage. So, when the MFC is not connected with the external circuit. So, there will be some potential difference between anode and cathode that is open circuit voltage, but when we will be connecting it, connecting it with some external circuit. So, continuously electron will flow and the effective voltage we will get that is called the closed circuit voltage. So, this open circuit voltage is always greater than the closed circuit voltage by summation of all polarization losses the cell voltage is written as V cell is equal to E c minus E a minus efficiency of anode ohmic and then concentration loss and pH difference loss. So, these are the losses or over potential we can say. So, eta is the over potential or polarization potential I is the current density and capital I total current and V voltage or potential are electrical resistance P microbial fuel cell power. So, already we have mentioned and here E c is the electrode potential for the cathode E a is the electrode potential for the anode and here act means activation, activation losses and concentrated concentration is concentration losses or on the alternate way we shall also write E cell is equal to E E m f minus eta a minus B minus E del P H minus E ionic minus E T minus E m, where E m f is the open circuit voltage, this is open circuit voltage mi minus the cathodic over potential and anodic over potential and this is the losses due to the pH difference between cathodic and anodic solution and E T is the transportation loss and E m is the membrane loss and E ionic is the ionic loss. So, that way also we can measure the E shell and different losses in MFC that is ohmic losses, activation losses the because of the accumulation of gases or other non reagent products at the interface between electrode and electrolytes. So, then activation losses is arised and bacterial metabolic losses and then concentration losses because of the uneven depletions of reagents in the electrolyte which causes concentration gradients in boundary layers and mass transfer through the membrane and voltage loss due to pH difference between cathodic and anodic chamber. And in this case current and voltage is expressed in terms of current density and power density. Current and power are expressed in terms of current density and power density. Microbial fuel cells can be of different types, okay. it can be single chamber, may be double chamber, may be flat plate, may be membraneless, or may be upflow MFC. 
So, this figure shows a double chamber. So, we have one membrane or other arrangement like salt bridge to separate anodic and cathodic solution and some efforts going on to improve the voltage and power generation in MFC also and those are adding suitable metal ions and using metal reducing microorganisms, doping of catalyst on the electrode, increasing anode area and decreasing inter electrode distance using more efficient microorganisms using more suitable oxidant in cathode. And these are some example of the use of microbes in MFC and the electricity generation. So, here we see different types of or pure compound have been used and their current and power generation have been determined, mixed waste water have been also been used and their power generation has also been determined. Now, we will see the MEC microbial electrolysis cell. So, here when MFC is developed, then we see that H plus plus O 2 plus electron is giving H 2 O that reaction can be changed if we apply some external voltage at the cathode. So, in this case for example, say if we have acetate, so that will react like this in presence of microorganism it will be converted to this one 9 H plus plus 80 minus and 8 H plus plus 80 that will give us 4 H 2 in the cathode. And then overall reaction is this one and this overall reactions which we are getting that 4 H 2 plus H plus 1 del H is del G is equal to 104.6 kilo joule per mole and this can be integrated with other process and operated at natural conditions as well as in mixed culture and then equivalent current that is equal to minus del G R by N F. So, equivalent voltage that is equal to minus del G R by N F. So, in this case G R is 104.6 and N is here 8 and F is we know that Faraday's constant value. So, this by putting this value we are getting 0 point minus 0 point 14 volt. So, this amount of voltage is needed at the cathode for performing this reaction. So, which reaction was taking place in MFC? We can stop it and that reaction can be converted to this mode by the application of this external voltage MEC. This is a device is a hydrogen gas by mimicking bacterial interactions found in nature. It degrade all type of waste into hydrogen with zero emission and 90 percent hydrogen recovery and it can 5.7 to 11.2 mole hydrogen per mole of glucose. Now, equivalent voltage that is E equivalent that is equal to E cathode minus E anode. So, cathodic voltage minus anodic voltage and in case of anode what is the reaction? This is the reaction. So, E anode that is equal to E 0 anode that is minus R T by 8 F ln C S 3 C O minus by H C O 3 minus square into H plus to the power 9. So, this is as per the expression this will be our anodic voltage and in the cathodic voltage this is the reaction 2 H plus plus 2 minus H 2 O. So, that cathodic voltage will be minus R T by 2 F ln partial pressure of hydrogen by H plus square. So, equivalent voltage will be cathodic minus anodic. So, minus 0 0.414 minus 0 point which we are getting here in this case that is equal to minus 0 0.0 minus 0 0.279 volt. Because here the E 0 A anode that is equal to 0 0.187 volt and R equal to 8.314 joule per kilo mole hmm, is the ideal gas law constant and T is the absolute temperature 
So, under standard biological conditions the anode potential is equal to 0 0.279 volt. So, this is given. So, by this minus this it is coming minus 0 0.14 volt. That means, this voltage is essential at cathode. So, you have to add some external voltage source minimum 0 0.14 volt this is as per this expression, but we have to provide some more. So, that is why minimum 0 0.2 is provided and we increase the voltage external voltage initially the hydrogen production rate increases in some cases we may get some optimum value of this external voltage for getting maximum hydrogen production and good amount of research is going on people are people are working on this area like say different types of cathode catalyst have been used and different applied voltage have been used different hydrogen production rates have been achieved and energy input is also varied. So, these methods are basically used for the production of energy component through the treatment of waste water. So, it is considered as advanced stage and as in this process microbes are being used. So, these are under the secondary treatment category. So, up to this in this class, thank you very much for your presence.